Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Ned over My Philippine Dreams. Today is July 18th, 2020, the first day of the rest of our lives. I haven't done a video in a little while, so I thought I would do a video. I'm actually just coming off the tail end of a viral infection of some sort. It started on Tuesday. Uh, today is, what, Saturday? And I'm just starting to come off it now, starting to feel a little bit better. So I thought I would do a quick video. This is a live stream. Um, but before I start, let's, uh, let's preface this, shall we, by saying that the Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia, and some other areas in Southeast Asia are dealing with a pretty bad dengue epidemic right now, as if things weren't bad enough. I mean, we got the, we got the dreaded malady still sweeping across the globe, causing chaos in all corners of every continent. Uh, we got murder wasps. We got all kinds of stuff going. And now we have a dengue infestation. Um, it's been pretty bad around Dumaguete. I had dengue last year, uh, December. Um, so I have been liberally slathering myself with off overtime. Now, these 80s mosquitoes, I guess, they're the little tiny mosquitoes. They're the, they're the ones that hit you usually on the lower parts of your legs. I guess those are the ones that carry dengue. So I make sure that I get my legs liberally covered with off overtime whenever I venture outside. Let's take a quick moment to check that this is actually working. All right, it's yellow. I got a yellow bar. Thank you, PLDT, for the yellow bar instead of being a green bar. All right, so I wanted to do this video because somebody had left a comment on my YouTube. And the gentleman's name was George Will. And he said, Yo, Ned, another American vlogger in the Philippines went back to the U.S. a few weeks ago. He said he just couldn't take the lockdown anymore. He wasn't a wimpy guy. He was on the cover of Soldier of Fortune. And I followed him for a long time. How bad is the lockdown and what are you doing and what you doing to not go crazy? Uh, well, thank you, George, for that comment and for everybody else who comments on my videos. I guess, from what I'm hearing, and I don't know if this is true, this is just what I'm hearing, I guess the, the lockdown in the Philippines has been the longest and most strict or repressive, if you will, in the world. Uh, we're still on passes here in Dumaguete on the island of Negros Oriental. We're only supposed to be going out three, three times a week. Uh, for me, I have the purple pass, so it's Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and I think you can go out Sunday. Everybody can go out Sunday. I'm not sure. Uh, they have all kinds of terms that they're using, all kinds of three-letter acronyms. They got ECQ, GCQ, MGCQ, MECQ. There's all kinds of stuff going on. It depends on where you're at. Security forces have actually been deployed in some areas. Uh, up in Manila, it's really bad. I think that's where the military and the PNP are being deployed to enforce curfew and quarantine measures. Also, the hospitals up in the NCR, there was a report that 22 of the major hospitals in the National Capital Region are not accepting any more COVID patients. So it is what it is. It's a situation. Indonesia is having a hard time. The United States is having a hard time. There's all kinds of people around the world having to deal with this. It's infected millions of people. You know, it's killed tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. It's a very bad thing. It's affected me personally. I personally know now people who have died from this. So it's a serious thing. Um, the good news is, hopefully, there's all kinds of nations working on and all kinds of pharmaceutical companies working on a vaccine for this. So hopefully, at some point, they can have the vaccine out. Also, I meant to preface this also. Like I said, I had a viral infection. It might be a bacterial infection. It seems like it's upper respiratory. That's why I'm sounding like I'm congested. There's two types of medication you can get for when you get sick in the Philippines. One of them is biogesic. The other is bioflu. My suggestion is don't bother with the biogesic. I've done biogesic before. When you're sick, it really doesn't do much. But this bioflu stuff, good shit. Good shit. I don't know what big pharma company is behind bioflu, but it works. So there's a shout out to bioflu makers. So yeah, um, moving on. And the guy didn't say what vlogger this was. I don't really follow the scene because there's so many people vlogging nowadays in the Philippines. Um, and it's really not important who it was. But I guess he went back to the United States. You can go back to the United States now. Uh, and as, I guess as of August 1st, the Philippines is saying, saying they're going to allow tourists back in as of August 1st. I don't know how that's going to pan out. 
considering current events here in the Philippines. I'm not sure what's going on there. But uh, he mentions the guy was on the cover of Soldier of Fortune. I used to read Soldier of Fortune as a kid. And if you're an American, you ever visit libraries or something, you'll know what I'm talking about. Soldier of Fortune is a cool magazine. Um, and so I assume he's military. And there's a couple of guys that I know that are ex-military vloggers. There's actually a lot of them, Americans in the Philippines. Uh, and if you're, if you're in the military, usually you're used to hurry up and wait. You're used to sitting around, twiddling your thumbs, waiting for something to happen, waiting to go somewhere, to be summoned forth, to respond to some situation. Uh, I was in the military for five years. I was in the U.S. Army. I actually, and I mentioned this before, I was a big sci-fi fan. I still am a big sci-fi fan. Also, make sure you check out The Expanse. The Expanse, I think it's on Amazon Prime or something. It's on one of those streaming services. It's amazing. And I used to read Robert Heinlein's Starship Troopers. And that's one of the reasons, in conjunction with Soldier of Fortune magazine, reading it when I was a kid, that I wanted to become a United States Army airborne paratrooper. And that's what I did. I also had two deployments down in Central America. That was back during the Sandinista Contra stuff. We were stationed uh, near San Lorenzo, not too far from Shirlateca, which was uh, right next to Nicaragua. And we spent a lot of time in holes. And if you've been in the military, you'll know what I'm talking about. Usually it was three days on, two days, uh, three days on, four days off, or two days on, three days off. We'd be sitting out in a hole. There'd be three of us. It was an observation post, sometimes called a listening post. And there'd be two of us awake and one of us sleeping on shifts. And you did everything in the hole. Um, you pooped in the hole. You peed in the hole. You, you did everything in the hole. You ate in the hole. You slept in the hole. So you were used to being in a hole. And when you weren't in the hole... You were sitting back at battalion and these giant um, GQ mediums or something, those big tents and the big large ones and stuff. And you'd be sleeping there. There was no air conditioning. There was no fans. It was my first time experiencing brutal tropical heat. I'll never forget it. I've always needed air conditioning since. Um, and it was my, also my first time seeing poverty. Uh, this is my first time as a privileged American venturing forth out from my country and seeing, you know, how other people around the world live. Uh, so we got used to, you know, being in a situation like that, being in holes, sitting around. We played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons, believe it or not. Uh, that was the first time I played Dungeons and Dragons. We also played a lot of card games, Pinochle. I learned hearts, spades, rummy, all that stuff. So we just made the best of it. Also, Every now and then, when you were back at Battalion, you could go, they'd have shower runs to the, the main base, uh, and you could have a shower, which was freaking awesome. So I got used to, you know, being in a strict, disciplined environment during my time, my two deployments down in Central America. They also had very good sugarcane rum down there. It was called Florida Cana, Florida Cana, down, to, down in Honduras. So... I'm kind of used to it. Plus, um, I try to structure myself because I'm a kind of a chaotic person and I'm, I'm kind of lazy and indolent at times. So if I don't have a schedule to stick to and if I'm not doing certain things at certain times and things aren't getting done, things aren't getting accomplished, it's like messy bed, messy head. If I let my surroundings just go to chaos, it drives me insane. It puts me in a really bad space. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. Let me make sure again that this thing is actually working. All right, looks like it's working. All right, moving on. Also, um, I was thinking if they had the vaccine in the fall or the winter, I could go back to the United States. And then I realized, I, I sometimes forget this, that Chichai is due either late next month or early September. So I'm not going to be going anywhere for a while because I got a family here in the Philippines and we got to take care of the business here that we need to take care of. Um, I'd love to see my parents I haven't, wasn't able to see them this past year, uh, but most of all, I just want them to be safe and to, you know, not be overly impacted by the situation that we're in, if you guys know what I mean, because Florida's in really bad shape. I guess Florida and Texas are not doing well. But yeah, uh, my daily structure, usually I get up early, uh, Chichai sleeps late, I get up early, I'm up at usually 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, I usually do my work then because it's cooler. I can turn off the air con because I've been sleeping with the air con. Open the windows. 
uh, and I get my work done. And that's usually like until 930. After that, it's time to do some exercise. I got my little home gym thing going to try to maintain some modicum of shape. And I also got chores I have to do because Chi Chai, she started at 35 kilos. She's now 47 kilos and she's having a tough time. So she can't be running around sweeping and bending over and mopping and doing all the stuff that normally needs to be done. So I've been doing that. So what I usually do is I intersperse my workout with doing the chores. Like I'll start sweeping and mopping and I'll be doing sets, trying to maintain. I've been doing yoga, stretching out my back, all that stuff. Um, after that, I usually run errands if there's Groceries we got to get, other things we have to do, I do that. Noontime is usually time for reading and a nap. Uh, lunch, and we usually watch TV. We've been watching Breaking Bad. I think, we're, I think we're more than halfway through it at this point. And in the afternoon, I also organize like paperwork, clean up my computer. If you have a computer, you know you got to clean up all your files, especially if you work online. I work on other website stuff. I've been grinding out a lot of content for another website that I have. Then it's time for dinner. Watch TV, play guitar, and then usually I'm asleep by 9 o'clock. It's not a very exciting life. I've been doing a lot of reading. I got my Kindle. I highly recommend anybody coming to the Philippines get a Kindle. Kindles are amazing. I've been reading a lot of Neil Gaiman recently. Uh, he was famous. He was an illustrator and comics uh, guy at first. He did the Sandman series. But he's also a great writer. Um, I just finished up. I read American Gods for the second time. And right now I'm reading Neverwhere. And uh, reading is the one thing in my Kindle, as, and I've said it time and time again, it's my favorite material possession here in the Philippines, other than my air conditioner, other than my air conditioner, Boston Bay. I've also been listening to a lot of podcasts. I got those on my phone. I got my Bluetooth headset, my Sony's. I love my Sony, my Sony headset. And I listen to podcasts. I've been listening to Office Girls. It's actually Jenna Fisher and Angela Kinsey from uh, The Office, and they break down the episodes bit by bit. It's really good. It's really insightful. I really enjoyed The Office. I've watched some of the... What I'm doing, actually, is watching an episode of The Office and then listening to the podcast, Jenna Fisher and Angela, doing all the commentary on it. Uh, I've also been listening to Jim Cornette's drive Through. I'm, I like old-school wrestling. I don't watch it now, but I love the history of it. I love the theater of it. I love the psychology of it. Jim Cornette is a crazy... And I actually... I actually didn't meet him, but I saw him. I went to an event down in North Carolina when I was at Fort Bragg, and I uh, was able to see him in all his glory. He's the, he was the guy with a tennis racket, and uh, he's just he's hilarious. I love him. Uh, and I've also been listening to Benjamin Walker's Theory of Everything. Whenever I want to get into a more cerebral space and start thinking about this and getting more reflective and stuff, I listen to Benjamin Walker. His is the first podcast. I've listened to all his podcasts, and now I'm re-downloading him and listening to them again because they're just so good. He's not a big podcaster. He's not very famous or anything, but his shit is on point. Another thing I've been doing, gaming. You guys know I'm gaming. One of my part-time jobs is actually in gaming, um, playtesting. And I've been playing, while we were on ECQ, I played God of War. God of War on PS4 was simply amazing. I'm also playing Diablo 3. Me and Chichai started playing that, but it's turned into a bit of a grind. It's just a loot thing. you got to try to keep upgrading yourself, and it's become more of a grind than anything else. Watching Netflix. We have Netflix. Some people, some of the vloggers, I've heard some of the vloggers, uh, two of the vloggers have said, and I, I don't have time to watch all of them, but I do watch some of them, because some of the guys are putting out really good content, but they said they feel like they're in prison, and we're not in prison. We have Netflix. We have podcasts. We, we can exercise. We, we're not in dog runs. Um, so I'm wa watching Breaking Bad. One thing I noticed watching Breaking Bad for the second time is what an evil bastard Walter is. I didn't really, really fully appreciate it the first time I watched Breaking Bad back when it came out. But now watching it again for the second time, he is just a despicable monster. And those guys deserved, I believe they got Emmys or Oscars. I don't know what they got, but they got, they deserved all the re awards that they got. I also watched The Politician recently. This is on Netflix, and it has to do with this high school kid who wants to become president, and so he becomes a politician, and it moves to him as an adult, and, and it's fantastic. Bette Midler is in it. The guy, Ben Platt, he's a singer. 
He's in it. He's the protagonist. And if you want to get into the mind of millennials to understand where things are in America right now with millennials and how they think and what they do and what's important to them, this gives you some insight into that, I think, in my humble opinion. Uh, also, I watched the Monty Python documentary, which was good. I've always been a big fan of Monty Python. I remember watching Monty Python as a kid. Maybe I was like six, seven, eight years old. I couldn't understand what they were saying because of the accents. I didn't you know, get into the accents later on. But I knew it was funny, and I liked it. And then I saw Quest for the Holy Grail, or Search for the Holy Grail, and I was hooked. Again, with the exercise, I've been doing some yoga, some stretching, some basic stuff just to keep my back loose, my neck okay. And I got my little home gym going with my 90-pound dumbbell, barbell, I should say. I've also been trying to stay away as much as possible, especially as an American, from social media, from Facebook, from Twitter, from all that stuff, because a lot of the stuff that's going around right now is pretty toxic. I don't know all the reasons behind it, but it's there. So I try to limit myself in staying off that. And finally, uh, I've been getting fat. I've been eating a lot. When I'm bored, I eat, and Chi Chai keeps making these fried chicken sandwiches that are freaking off the chain. So I'm up to 217 pounds now. I've gained about, I hate to say it, I think almost 15 pounds since the quarantine stuff started. Also nips. Nips are like M&Ms in the United States and there's different kinds. There's the regular chocolate ones, but they taste very peppery. I think it's because of the crap chocolate they use. They also have peanut nips, which are kind of like peanut M&Ms, but they have the big bag of nip, nips, the red bag, and those are more expensive, but they're fantastic. But they're also 600 calories each. So I need to cut down on that. So as to what I'm doing and what I've been doing to not go crazy, to not completely lose my mind here in the Philippines, um, it's basically just trying to stay structured, trying to avoid the messy bed, messy head thing, trying to make sure that I'm accomplishing. I put out a little list of things that I want to do during the day, and I check them off one at a time. And uh, that seems to be working for me. Some days it's easier than others. This past week has been very difficult because I was sick. So basically all I did was sleep. And I'm not a good sleeper usually. I have insomnia. I keep waking up and all that stuff. But I think I've caught up on my sleep for a while now. All right, let's go to the comments. This is enough of me babbling away. Oh. 67 people watching. Oh, there's a lot of comments. I wasn't watching the comments. Good morning, Sasha, RNL, Mike in the Philippines, John, Pete, Bruce, Sam, everybody. Uh, they stopped with the checkpoints in CDO, but still require a pass to enter SM. Yeah, to get into any of the major shopping places here, you still have to show your pass. Uh, Bruce Sinodar says, I wear long pants, socks, and real shoes and hardly ever get bit. Yeah, the real bad ones. I don't mind getting bit on my shoulders by the big ones or wherever. But those little ones, not only do they carry dengue, but they're also the ones that cause the crazy itching. And it just drives me insane. And as you're crazily itching it, you're like, is this dengue? Did I get dengue? When I got sick on Tuesday, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, I'm, I'm alternating between, is this COVID or could this possibly be dengue again? Uh, what? M.A. Larry Villanueva from Escaping to the Philippines said you wanted to beat him up. Why? How did the situation happen? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, that was just an interaction I had with him at Bogart's one night. Him and Barry, Bama. No, that worked out fine. We, it was just, it was a misunderstanding. I didn't want to beat him up. I didn't want, I didn't want to beat up anybody. But sometimes it's necessary. And again, another thing about being in the Philippines is they don't care if foreigners get into fights. Uh, James Culver says his, his name was Mark Blackford. All right, I'll check out his channel. He must be talking about the guy who left the Philippines. Yeah, Mark James Culver also says he was on SOF, Soldier of Fortune cover. Yeah, so he must be military. Oh, he's an ex-paratrooper and police officer. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. It's tough. It's, uh, but, um, 
a lot of times I also lose perspective because being born where I was born in the, in the circumstances that I was born um, and having what I have because in a large part of where I was born, I sometimes forget that. And I sometimes forget that there are people in my neighborhood, my, some of my neighbors, struggling day to day, no work, no pay, trying to get rice, trying to get dried fish, trying to get a can of sardines. So I sometimes lose that perspective and I start feeling bad for myself. And this is so boring and I just wish I could go out and carouse and have a good night out drinking or whatever. And I'm worried about that. And there's other people, I'm sure, that don't have the money for adequate medical care and don't have enough money for food. So who the fuck am I? Scranton, Pennsylvania. Yes, Dave Jones says, The Office, my hometown, Scranton, Pennsylvania. Yep. The Office was such a great show when it came out. It still is. And that podcast where they break down each episode piece by piece, and they also uh, call in to some of the other cast members and they talk to them. All right. Uh, M.A. says, thanks for being cool to answer. Larry says that you had a bunch of goons with you and he chose to walk away because he was outnumbered. It's on Larry's recent live stream. The goons that I know are like all in their 70s. The Bogarts crew I hang out with are mostly older guys. I don't know about that. Anyways, I'm not going to get involved in drama. And M.A., if you're trying to drum up drama, I'm just going to block you. Arnell Augustin says, if any of your ex-military like myself remember that bug juice that we were issued, that stuff was flammable and smelly. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But I'll tell you one thing. When, when, when I was down at Fort Bragg, the chow halls, because we used to drink a lot at Fort Bragg. When you're a paratrooper, you drink because you're a manly man doing manly things. And they used to have this grape juice, and it was like that conquered grape juice, and it was the best thing for a hangover. So you guys, you'd be all out drinking, um, and then you'd have PT, you know, which wasn't fun. Everybody smelling all the beer coming through the sweat. And then you'd have that grape juice, that conquered grape juice that they had in the chow halls. It's freaking great. Yeah. John McGrew says, yeah, I can see that. You and a bunch of goons. Yeah, because I have a crew of goons that I hang around with. No. Like most other American, well, a lot of foreigners in the Philippines, I'm pretty much a lone wolf. I kind of stick to myself. Um, I get acquaintances. Uh, there are some people that I can trust, like with money, and they can trust me with money. So I says that says something about the relationship. Um. But it's not like you, I wander around with a crew or a gang or anything. Pete Chamberlain, any truth of the rumor that dengue carrying mosquitoes only come out at dusk? Yes. Yes, those little bastards, usually in the morning and definitely in the, in the late afternoon. Uh, they don't deal well with strong winds. So if there's a good breeze, you're okay. But if it's a lot of rain like it is right now, we're in rainy season here in Negros Oriental. Uh, also the backyard, I have a backyard. I actually did a video on this. I don't know why I did it. I had a backyard full of really long grass and weeds and all kinds of stuff. So yesterday I was feeling a little bit better and I found the wherewithal to go out there and rip all that stuff out to get rid of like nesting opportunities or sheltering opportunities for these bastards. And you'll also say, Oh God. Oh, let me before I respond to MA's continuing call for drama, uh, they also like when you have towels on your, on your towel line and it's in the shade, they love let nesting in there. Or in your motorcycle helmet, you pick up your motorcycle helmet and it's just thousands of mosquitoes coming out of it. Those, again, the little ones, the little 80s mosquitoes, the little bastards. Uh, it's so, f okay, MA goes on to say, and I'm not feeding into this. Larry says that you were with a bunch of steroid dudes. His words, not mine. No drama. Okay, so Bill, Ernie, Peter, you're all steroid dudes, and you're all my goons. Uh, anyway, so that's basically it. I just wanted to do a quick video on this, plus to let everybody know that I'm still alive. I'm still here. 
trying to take care of business, doing what I need to do. Um, I'm actually, I mentioned before that one of my part-time gigs is that I, um, I'm game testing and there's a next generation game that's coming out. It's a big company in the United States that I work for. And the video card, a very expensive video card that they sent me blew up last week. So I emailed them and they're sending me another, that same, that same version of the video card. It's an art and it costs like $500. So one of the bennies of doing game testing, play testing, all I do is collision detection. If anybody knows what collision detection is, that's what I do. Um, but that's pretty cool. They're sending me another video card. James Culver says, most alcoholics per capita in the world, but the most physically fit alcoholics, Fayetteville, North Carolina. I agree with that. Yes, there's a lot of drinking at the time also. Uh, there was also a lot of psychedelic use because there was drug testing going on, but they couldn't test for certain psychedelics. So, yeah. Yeah. Mike in the Philippines, uh, have you seen the new vlogger Filipina P from Dumaguete? Oh, I didn't know Filipina P was from Dumaguete. I saw that Rike had done a Skype interview, I believe, with her or a live stream with her. And, uh, yeah. Frank's AC repairman. Uh, oh, and Mrs. Oh, Mrs. Hemmerger. She's in there. New life in the Philippines. How's it going? New life in the Philippines. I never understood why you took down the videos that you took when that bar girl was uh, that situation you had. I wish you had kept that up because that was a very educative and informative video. I never understood why New Life took that down. New life in the Philippines. Um, cause I've known more than a few guys that have been in the same situation, same things happen to them. And I think stuff like that should be kept up. I may, maybe you took it down because of the, the topic or maybe YouTube flagged it, whatever. I'm not sure. All right. So that's basically it. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, give a quick plug for my book. If you're interested in Retiring, living, studying, doing anything in the Philippines after August 1st, I guess, because nobody can come before them. Check out my book. The link is down in the video description box. Until next time, puppies, rainbows, and unicorns for all. Be well.